What's up guys? So today I'm gonna be bringing you guys along on a wedding shoot. And this isn't just a normal wedding shoot, this is like a three day wedding extravaganza. So I have to drive up a couple hours north of where I live up to a town called Hako. And we'll be doing two days there, different events happening at this really beautiful um, development there and then the last day which is actually the ceremony we're gonna be shooting down in Manuel Antonio which is one of the more beautiful areas on the Pacific of Costa Rica and I'm gonna bring you guys along I'm gonna attempt I guess to bring you guys along because shooting weddings is super you know like full-on and intense and non-stop at all times so I don't know how much time I'm gonna really have to uh, shoot for this vlog, but I want to actually bring you guys along because I want to give you guys some tips of how I shoot weddings and if you're just getting started with doing weddings, what you can kind of expect when you start doing it. The first thing that I definitely always do that I don't know if other people do this or how they do it, and that is I try to get a feel for what kind of music they like. So. When you're editing a wedding video, it totally depends on what type of music the couple likes and wants in the video, obviously. You know, you can't just get away with going on like Epidemic Sound and typing in wedding music, you know, you just get like some kind of cheesy sound beds that sometimes they work for certain people, but sometimes people want something completely different. Last wedding I did, they wanted country music. The one before that, they wanted Latin music, specifically by this local Latin artist. Um, this one, they want electronic music. So I have no idea what people are gonna want, and I need to start talking to them right away about it so I can like look up some examples. I have a subscription to Epidemic Sound. There's a link in the description if you want a free month of that but that's where I get all my music and it's all royalty free. So obviously you can't use copyrighted music if the couple wants to post to social media and most couples do. So I have to explain that to them first that they can't just have you know their favorite song or they can if they don't want to share it, but usually people want the freedom to be able to share it wherever they want. So I have them usually send me a couple songs that they like and I look up a few different options on Epidemic and I send them like five or six different songs, not too many of them, I don't wanna waste their time. And I see if they like any of them, if they don't like any of them at all, that's fine. I ask them, you know, which one at least is getting a little bit warmer. And I start trying to figure this out ahead of time so when it comes time to edit, when the you know wedding's done and I get back home and I'm going to edit, I already have the song or songs and I can just bust it out. I don't have to spend you know, weeks going back and forth with the couple to find that song. Next thing is gear. Let's look at what I'm bringing. All right, I got my nomadic Peter McKinnon backpack here. Love this thing, you can fit so much in it. Um, but I always end up packing way too much stuff in it, but it carries it well. So what I got in here mainly is, well, the camera I'm using right now is the Sony a6600. I'm also bringing my Sony a7S for a uh, another camera. I usually set up an, a, a still camera while I'm uh, running around with my gimbal. I have the Mavic, or not the Mavic, but the Air 2, extra batteries. Uh, I have a la wireless lav mic um, that I usually set up for like speeches and stuff and during the ceremony. See what I got here. I got a 50 millimeter. I got this is actually what I use mostly for my weddings, and it's a 18 to 135. So you got you know that whole range to work with. You don't really want to be changing lenses too much when you're doing a wedding. Um, I got an extra light here that sometimes I rig up on my gimbal for nighttime like dance shots. Uh, I got my Zion Crane 2 gimbal. I have a tripod, and this is just a light stand, kind of like this one here. Just a basic light stand that I can set up a mic on if I need to. Uh, headphones to check my audio levels. Extra little tripods, a handle if I want to go handheld, a bunch of chargers. And that's pretty much it. I try to keep it pretty simple. So I pack all of that stuff that I'm bringing 
on to my motorcycle here, which people probably think is a little crazy, but I like riding motorcycles and I make it work. Here we go. The best investment I made this month is a thermos. Stop and have tea time on the road. We'll fill it up with coffee at the cafe. So I'm the first person here, but this place is pretty beautiful. All right, first day of the wedding is finished. It's morning, sipping some tea. She just finished my tea, need to go get some coffee. But I wanted to tell you guys about one of the most important things that you can possibly remind yourself to do when you're shooting weddings. And that is make sure right after you shoot, if you're doing a multi-day shoot, or even if you're just doing a single wedding, take that card out of your camera, put it in your computer. Hopefully you got a SD card reader in your computer and take all that footage off of your card and put it in a labeled folder in a folder that houses all of your clips for that project and what I do is I double triple check it I go through I look at the first clip the last clip make sure they're actually all in the folder make sure they're actually on my computer and make sure that they actually play so I play it check it, make sure everything's all good, double, triple check, and make sure that I have those clips before I delete them, reformat my card, and get ready for the next shoot. This is your one chance with weddings. You can't lose that footage. It's literally impossible, and you will feel terrible if you lose these memories that people are wanting to hold on to the rest of their life. So make sure that you safeguard them as the most important files on your computer. And by the way, this is reshot clip because the last clip I just shot was like eight minutes long. Do I talk too much, guys? Let me know down in the comments if you think I talk too much. I'm gonna head out now and go get some coffee at my favorite coffee shop in Hako, Cafe Bohio. <laughs> Alright, I am finally back. This is literally two weeks after I started this vlog. I've been so busy with weddings nonstop, with kind of everything, but I, I had a run of like four weddings in a row. One of them was like a three-day wedding. I already told you guys about that. I already forgot what I was talking about, but they all went really well. Just kind of exhausted and uh, ready for a couple day little break. But I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about some things I learned in the last few weeks and pass along some tips so you can have a better wedding shoot. So the first thing was simplify your setup. So I already mentioned what I was using before, but I ended up using this lens the majority of the time. It's the actual uh, kit lens for my A6600. So it's an APS-C lens. It's an 18 to 135. 
3.5 to 5.6. I wish it was a 2.8 all, all the way across. That would be amazing. Um, but this is what I got right now. And I don't really use this that often, but weddings, this thing is perfect. It's super lightweight, you know, perfect range for everything you kind of need to capture. The only time I swapped out that lens was to a 50 millimeter which is actually, this is a full frame lens, so it equates to like a 75 on my APS-C camera. Um, and this has a 1.8 f-stop, so I can get those like super um, beautiful bokeh shots. And I really liked using this one a lot for, you know, details and um, after, like during the reception, the party, I used it a lot. But during the actual ceremony, it was just this bad boy, the 18 to 135. So make sure you have a really good range and you don't want to be swapping lenses, especially if you're on a gimbal. You got to rebalance it and you're going to miss some part of the action. Next thing I want to mention is when you get to a wedding, meet the photographer or photographers and make friends with them right away. Coordinate with them exactly, you know, kind of how you guys shoot so you know what to expect. Um, you know, make sure that when you are shooting that you're not completely uh, diagonal from each other, shooting towards each other and getting each other in, in the shot. So it's kind of like a choreographed dance of you and the photographers. So the better you guys know what's going on and how what shots you guys need to get, the easier it'll be to get shots without them in it and vice versa. Always make sure to be ready for the first look and to kind of plan it out a little bit before. The first look is the first time that the bride and groom see each other in their wedding gowns and outfits. And it's a really special moment and most people really want to capture that. So if you have the time before the ceremony, um, plan out a nice spot to shoot and have the groom, you know, waiting there for the bride with his back turned and maybe the bride comes over and taps him on the shoulder or however you want to choreograph this. This is kind of your time to get creative and practice some blocking, you know, pretend like you're working with some actors and making a film and you want to create this experience where they can actually have a genuine first look and you got to be ready to capture that because there's only one first look. Uh, of course, after that, you can do a few extra other shots in case, you know, the first look doesn't look as like you wanted it. You have some extra coverage, but just really make sure that's a really important one to capture. Another thing I've learned over time is getting to know the couple better will make your shoot go a lot better and you'll capture better moments. If they feel comfortable with you, they're not going to feel, you know, they can just be themselves in front of the camera. They're not going to be like weirded out by you putting the camera in their face. So I like to have Zoom call if I can't meet in person before the wedding and you know weeks ahead or months ahead, depending on how early you scheduled it and get to know them a little bit, find out about what kind of style they like, what kind of music they like and just get a feel for them. So when you show up there, you guys already know each other. Lastly, something that I like to do and of course you can just charge for this too, but what I like to do is to go a little bit above and beyond and make sure that my clients and the wedding planner as well are really happy is I record the whole ceremony with audio just straight through on a camera, a second camera on a tripod, even if they don't order it. So even if they don't decide to not pay for it, I'll still set up a tripod and I'll still set up a wireless mic right by, I'll either attach it to the microphone they're using or the mic stand somewhere really close to their mouth and I'll capture all that. Now that for one, it covers my ass and in case I don't get a shot or something, I, I always have that shot just in case and I have all the audio from it too if I need it. And then I don't really have to edit it, you know, I just have to bring it into Premiere, cut off the ends or whatever, you know, maybe do a little bit to the audio and export it. And I give that kind of as a bonus to the couples and they usually really love that. Being able to make them extra happy and this goes for pretty much any client that you have, if you go a little bit over above and beyond, you're gonna get more work out of it. So if you make them happy, the wedding planner is gonna be happy 
And if you find, you know, a few wedding planners to work with, you really don't need to advertise anymore. They can just book you whenever they have weddings and you know, you're good. So give more, not less. And lastly, just roll the camera. Don't worry about too much, you know, like how much, where you're moving or maybe you're behind somebody's head, just hit record. You, you know, if there's a moment about to happen and you're at least recording, even if there's somebody's head in the way, like you still might capture something special that just happened. Maybe it was just a look that happened or their first kiss and you weren't in the right spot. Just make sure that you're rolling camera as much as possible. Um, you can never get too much footage at a wedding ceremony. Just make sure you get all the coverage that you possibly can. And you know, you'll have a lot more abilities to create something beautiful in the edit. So that's about it. I, there's a lot more that goes into shooting weddings. I just wanted to cover a few tips because I was shooting a bunch right now. And I hope you guys have some wedding shoots yourself coming up and don't stress about them. They're fun. They're beautiful to edit. I always like almost cry when I'm editing them. So it's a special experience being able to capture that. So if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and say what's up down in the comments if you have any questions about anything. And also join my online course on how to become a freelance filmmaker and travel the world on Skillshare, link in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video.